This is a 2016 Audi S5, and today we'll be taking this typical Audi and turn it into an ultimate sleeper. Let's get right into it. You've had this car for what, two years? You kept the stock? Yep, just about two years. Started doing some research, uh, got a hold of you. You and I started chatting and came up with a game plan. I'm definitely gonna be happy to help out enthusiasts like you. You're coming from a Mazda 3, I believe you were telling me? Mazda Speed 3, yeah. <laughs> Completely different platform, and yet I'm really happy you're stepping into something new, especially like the V8 and a half, S4, S5, like these cars have a lot of potential. We'll be taking your car from 330 horsepower to a around 450, 460s. More power, baby. More power, baby. Should be a, a rowdy car. <laughs> yeah, for a stock car, it's, it's quite impressive what yeah. these Audis are capable of. But looking forward, I think it's time that we turn this thing into a rowdy beast. Today we'll be taking this 2016 S5 with just a few bolt-ons from 330 horsepower to 460 horsepower with integrated engineering. Now this car is stock and so it doesn't have any bolt-on whatsoever besides simple intake from engine. What we're gonna be doing today is upgrading the crank pulley to a 207 millimeter crank pulley. That's gonna give the car a dual pulley ratio, bumping it up from stage one to stage two dual pulley. What's great about just the 207 millimeter pulley is that you can achieve the dual pulley ratio by just upgrading the crank pulley and not having to touch the supercharger pulley at all. We also have this heat exchanger from PLM and what's that gonna do is provide optimal cooling for the car since the stock heat exchanger is quite tiny. So we're also gonna be upgrading that. And like I said, we're gonna be removing this engine intake and upgrading it to the integrated engineering intake. I now had access to the supercharger tensioner and therefore I was able to take the belts off. Then I proceeded to take the crank pulley bolts off and remove the OEM crank pulley. Hey, there you go. Let's compare these pulleys right here. This is a lot, yeah, definitely a lot bigger than the stock crank pulley. What we have to do is line up this offset bolt with this one right here. So this one on the integrated engineering pulley is actually the offset bolt on the crank. Take a look down there. I'm gonna clean that surface off. The other thing that you also have to do when you're installing a 190, 196, 205, 207, whichever pulley ratio you're going with, you have to grind this little knob down right here, about three or four millimeters. And essentially that's gonna give space for the belt and the pulley to move around without rubbing it. So we're gonna take a Dremel to that. The great thing about upgrading the crank pulley is there's this harmonic balancer that's found on the stock crank pulley and it fails and it tears apart. Essentially it separates. Integrated Engineering's 207 millimeter pulley is a one piece billet pulley I believe if I'm not mistaken but it's much lighter much lighter than the stock crank pulley first of all that's less rotational mass that means the engine can rev up quicker Let's take a Dremel to that little knob and then we'll get the crank pulley installed get the new belts on and get this thing buttoned up what you do have to make sure is that you slip on this belt on top of the pulley right now Otherwise, you won't be able to get it on later. You have to make sure that you lock tight all of these. You don't have to go crazy with it. <laughs> Just a little bit. Ready, tidy, right? <laughs> After painting the crash bar black, it was time to install the heat exchanger on the crash bar. I measured it out, made sure that it was in the center of the crash bar, marked my brackets, and then took the brackets off of the heat exchanger. Putting them on the crash bar, I was able to fasten them with some self tappers that I had on hand, which were just 516 self tappers with some lock washers, and then fasten the heat exchanger to the brackets. After securing the crash bar, it was time to get some plumbing done. I had some three quarter hoses on hand, so I decided to quickly whip something up that would work perfectly for the customer. Using some three quarter hose clamps, I was able to tighten up all the connections and make sure that there was no coolant leakage. It was time to install the intake, and guess what? Of course, my battery died. Here's what the finished product looks like. All that was left to do is flash the ECU. 
We flashed a dual pulley crackle file from Integrate Engineering because uh, pops and crackles are great. I also flashed the TCU to raise the rev limiter all the way up to 7400 RPM. Adding to that list, we also flashed the two-step fuel cut launch control. Now, before we started the car, I decided to change the oil to the Slick Kumali 5W40 motor oil. It is the best option for any Audi Volkswagen and also this Wix filter. You guys won't believe what I found when the owner told me that he had previously changed his oil at a local Jiffy Lube. Check this out. Pulling this oil filter out, guys, I could not believe my eyes. I've never seen anything like this. This is just absolutely careless. Clearly, just a bad job. They should have smashed it in there. I'm so happy I found it. I proceeded by changing both the O-rings on the oil cap and also the oil filter housing, making sure that they're both seated properly. Then putting the filter onto the oil cap and torquing it down to spec, which is honestly just hand tight. I believe it's 25 nanometers, which is the actual torque spec. Now the owner couldn't tell me what kind of oil they actually put inside his car. I'm gonna guess it was some random off-brand they had on the shelf. It was absolutely burnt only after a thousand miles of driving. I topped off the car with six liters of Liquid Molly 5W40 and also topped off the coolant to make sure that it was up to spec. It is so much louder, huh? <laughs> nice, sounds really good. That oh yeah, that smile is exactly what I wanted to see. Whew. That really pulls, guys. I mean, like, it really feels like a monster. Like, I love the turbo, but I really miss the supercharger. It's amazing how it just keeps building boost and it goes, it pulls strong all the way to red line. You said responsiveness was like the biggest difference for you overall? Overall, yeah, that's the biggest thing I've noticed. Just when I mash on it, stock versus now. Stock, it would kind of lag and then gradually build. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, boom, right just there. Goes. Falls to wow. the wall. No, he does not like this road. No, 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 no. Spun all fours. <laughs> Guys, with Pirellis and you're still spinning like that, you're a real menace to society. There you go. And spinning all fours, you definitely need some better road surface, that's for sure. Or like oh, yeah. really good tires. Yeah. But still, overall, like, man, this car is impressive. It pulls like a monster and uh, it definitely sounds like one too. So uh, good stuff, man. For Thank real. You. Thanks yes. for coming in. So I hope this will keep you happy for at least the winter.